In this video, I would like to talk about a special kind of motion that'll be really helpful for understanding more general kinds of motion um, later on. So in particular, I want to discuss rectilinear motion, which is a fancy way of just saying motion along a straight line. Okay, so rectilinear motion is interesting because a lot of real life motion is rectilinear. So for example, um, most motion of a car. So if you're driving down the road um, and you speed up or you slow down or even reverse, um, that's all rectilinear. Um, you're moving along the same line in any of those cases, so that's rectilinear motion. Um, when an object falls directly downward, that's also rectilinear motion. It's speeding up, but it's speeding up along a straight line. Um, we can think of walking as rectilinear. You're just moving forward in a straight line. Um, and there are other things as well. So um, situations where an object is moving but not quite along a straight line, like we might imagine a train, for instance, we can probably approximate as rectilinear. Um, but if it were a more complicated track, something like a roller coaster, then that would be what we call curvilinear motion. So still just one path, but it's not a straight line. But for, for now, we are interested in straight line motion. Okay, so just to give you a hint about why this is going to be so important as we go, um, even for complicated 3D motion, um, this is still useful. And the reason is because, um, useful for 3D motion, because we can consider X, Y, and Z separately. Okay, so even for a complicated motion, I can say, all right, I'm just going to look at the X position and ignore whatever's going on in the Y and Z direction. And then I have a rectilinear motion in the X position. And then I repeat that for Y and I repeat that for Z. So I have these three different rectilinear motions and then I can just combine them at the end and I've got 3D motion. Um, that works a shocking amount of the time. There are a lot of cases where we can split up motion like that and it works just fine. Um, and we're going to look at some of those cases um, as we go. Okay, so one of the tools that we have when we're dealing with rectilinear motion is because the motion is along a straight line, we can imagine that we just have a number line like this. And we can call this like the X axis or something if we want, but it's got a zero point and then one meter, two meters, three meters, and then in the other direction, negative one, uh, negative two, and negative three. Okay, so we can say where an object is based on just this one coordinate. Um, and if that's the case, then we can even plot the position as a function of time. So we can think of, all right, at a certain time, it has a certain position, at a different time, it has a different position. And so we plot that with a graph. Now note the axes here. What I'm going to plot on the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is X, the position. Okay, so be really careful not to just um, call the horizontal axis the X axis by default um, and the vertical axis as the Y axis because it's not. Here the X axis is the vertical axis. In principle, we can name any axis anything we want and we're doing that here. X axis is now the vertical axis. Okay, so let me just draw some arbitrary motion um, on this graph. So let's say that we have um, a position graph that looks like this, and then maybe it goes like this, and then like that, and then like that, like that, and then kind of like that. All right, so this is just an object's position as a function of time. And we can actually do a lot of analysis with this. This gives us a lot of information about how this object is moving. So for example, we can figure out a velocity graph from this. So let's say that I want to plot the velocity as a function of time. And I'm going to try to be consistent with the time axis. So things that are happening at a certain time on the x-axis, or on the x-graph, I should say, should happen at the same time on the velocity graph. Okay, so um, to begin with, we have this motion where the object is right here. I'm staying at the same position for some amount of time. Well, that means it stopped. So its velocity is zero during that time. And then we have this next part of the motion here. Well, its position is getting higher, so that means it's moving to the right. So it's going to have a positive velocity during that time. Then for the next segment, it's getting closer to zero. Um, and so it's going to have a negative velocity during that time. Okay, let me mark this spot here. Those are at the same time. Then um, the change that happens here is it is just um, moving back to the left faster. So that means it's going to have a larger velocity, uh, larger magnitude of velocity, but still negative. Then over here, it is stopped again, like that. And I'll mark this time on here. And then finally, for this last segment, it is moving to the right again. So that's going to look kind of like that. Okay, so we can take a position graph and plot a velocity graph from it. Um, we may be able to do that backwards. Um, and we can also, for some motion, plot the acceleration if we know the velocity graph. So let me just do an example of that. Let's say that we know the velocity graph for some motion. So here's velocity, here's time. Maybe the velocity graph looks like this. Okay, well, I can plot an acceleration graph for that same graph. And essentially, if I start out with zero velocity and later have a positive velocity, that's going to be a um, acceleration that looks like that, positive acceleration. Because again, remember, the acceleration is dv by dt, so we can just look at the slope. Okay, then we have a segment where the velocity is not changing. 
So the acceleration is zero during that time. And then finally, a segment where the velocity is decreasing, which means that it's got a negative acceleration.